Hey guys, going to be going over the 9 game NBA slate for Monday, December 13th. So starting with Miami at Cleveland, we got uh, a Miami team that is still going to be missing a lot of their key pieces. Jimmy Butler, Bam Adebayo at the top. Um, and uh, I think this is uh, Caleb Martin. He is going to be out for this game as well. So now um, or he was supposed to be chalk last game, but obviously he didn't play. So they started Gabe Vincent. Charlie Hero still came off the bench, and they played really well against the Bulls. So I would say that this is a very tough matchup. The Cavs are actually one of the better teams, um, believe it or not, um, in the Eastern Conference. And they just play slow. They are a very good defensive team, and they're this isn't really appealing of a matchup. Like Kyle Lowry, AK, now he's got the talent. He can definitely get there, but now he's at AK. So it's not like a piece that you feel like you have to have. Tyler Hero, he actually hasn't been really priced up. Um, but again, same tough matchup for a guard. Um, Deadman, 5K, you know, he had a great game last time, but this isn't, you know, the same easy matchup. Like he's going to have to deal with Mobley, Jared Allen, of course, so not easy. Um, Duncan Robinson, shooting dependent, tough defensive matchup, so it's just kind of hard to get there. Like maybe you can look for value, you know, look at Gabe Vincent, um, PJ Tucker. I just don't think I want to pay 4100 for him in this spot, so... Miami, it's kind of weird without a baller and bam, but just the pricing and the matchup makes it tough to get to them. Now the Cleveland side, so um, you're going to be looking at them actually getting an easier matchup because of Miami just missing a lot of their better defensive players. So um, though that is the case, these prices are kind of high. Like they're coming off of some really good games like the Kings. That was a fantastic matchup. Minnesota was as well. So like you look at some of these players, yeah, they've been great, but their prices have caught up to their production. So a guy like Ricky Rubio, it's not a lock for him to close. Same with Laurie Markkinen. Like, uh, Chetty Osman, he actually closed last game over Laurie. So there's just some concerns about um, these Cleveland guys. Now, Golden State at Indy, there have been reports about Steph Curry possibly being rested because they are in a first end of a back-to-back. Now, I don't think he will be because, um, obviously right there, it says that um, he is on track. So probably it's because he didn't... Um, break Ray Allen's record yet but uh, I believe he's seven threes away from breaking that record like I feel like he was gonna get rested because they wanted him to play against New York at uh, Madison Square Garden so it's just more you know appealing for the NBA uh, to just have Curry do that there but you know seven threes he could certainly do it tonight I would think that maybe he does it on Tuesday um, and he plays on the back-to-back but you know who knows um, Indy like their defense hasn't been that great this year um, even with Miles Turner healthy. So I think it's totally fine, but I think there's definitely better point per dollar plays. Um, if he does somehow rest, and, uh, of course, you're looking for a lot of value. There will be a lot of it on this Golden State team. Now, Indiana, so their prices, um, like Sabonis, he's 9700 That's not really appealing. Like big men against uh, Golden State, it's kind of tough. They just are a very good defensive team. Um, Justin Holiday could be back for this one, so that's going to be a, a slight you know, hit to some of the wings, but like for the main three, like they're still going to get the ball. Karis LeVert, 6,500. I loved him last slate, um, but again, totally different matchup. So I'm not really going to, I guess, I mean, I'm not really chasing it because I did play him that uh, that day, but you know, it's definitely a much more expensive, uh, more expensive price tag and tougher matchup. Um, but yeah, that's going to be it for Indy. Nothing too appealing. Now Sacramento. So anytime you have a team against Sacramento, right, it's always going to be very, uh, a nice target so looking at the Kings players here I think you have a few standouts so Fox at 8 when he's above 8k I don't feel like he's a must um Halliburton at 5 7 he is I mean he's been good I know last game wasn't that great but again Cleveland that is how good they are he's been getting a lot of assists like he's basically stealing Fox's playmaking um and he's been really good with the steals as well so 5700 Toronto they do have some good individual defenders, but overall, Toronto isn't a team that you're really concerned about. Um, so I think he's in play, but he's fine, very deep. Or he's a tournament play, of course, because his minutes and um, role, it's just, it varies from game to game. Harrison Barnes, I think, is the most appealing play at 5-1. So last game, the Kings were pretty much getting blown out, but then they put in um, the reserves in uh, midway through the third, and they actually got back in the game. So Alvin Gentry just rewarded those guys, and they continued to play them throughout uh, the entire game. So guys like Barnes, you're going to see low minutes, 25, but if you really look at how the rotations worked, like Barnes was going to probably be on pace to play, you know, at least 32 minutes or something. So 
that just definitely is a good thing to see because it was a back-to-back and um, Barnes is coming off of a two-week layoff. So he should be good to go to play his usual minutes here. And at 5,100, that's just way too cheap. Barnes should be like 6'5". Um, other guys, if they continue to start Marvin Bagley, like that's definitely a value play that you should consider at 3,800. This is a matchup that they should be able to close with him at center. Uh, Chris Boucher, Siakam, uh, because last game it was against Cleveland with uh, Jared Allen, Mobley, Markin, and Love, all those guys. So they needed size with uh, Tristan Thompson, Alex Len. Now the Toronto side, so we target teams that are going up against the Kings. Now Toronto has been priced up recently, and it's kind of tough again. I would say Scotty Barnes definitely looks really good um, out of the main three because it's, it's just his price. Like he's actually playing some minutes at center. And, you know, that's kind of crazy, but obviously that's going to boost his rebounding um, and a pace up spot. He's a very good defender. He gets a lot of stats. He'll also run some points. So like 15 rebounds, that's what, uh, I mean, you shouldn't expect that again, but you're going to definitely see increased rebounding uh, from a guy like Barnes here. So that's pretty good. Uh, I think he's a little bit cheap maybe, but he probably will be owned because of that. I think you can definitely play Siakam Van Vliet even. Um, Siakam would be, I guess, behind Barnes. But I think the best play is definitely going to be Chris Boucher. 4,300 with Kem Birch and Precious Achua out. So Boucher has been starting. He got in foul trouble last game. And he still able to, was able to play 27 minutes. He also lost him at the end. So you're looking at one of the better matchups in all of fantasy. And with the potential to play 30 minutes possibly or over that, like I know if you look at the past uh, couple of starts, you know, he that's not really a score that you have to have at 4,300, but you're factoring the matchup. Like OKC, they play slow. Um, the Knicks, they're a good defensive team. Uh, they Obviously, that game was really low scoring, and he was able to do that. So I'm liking this spot for Boucher. I think he should be a core, so I like him. Um, now Milwaukee at Boston. So this game, Milwaukee's on a back-to-back. They played against the Knicks early morning um, on Sunday, so... We're going to have to wait if they do rest anyone. If they don't, then they're kind of just there. Like, you can play Giannis, it's fine. But Boston is a tough defensive matchup, Um, especially because Boston is getting back Jalen Brown. So at 9-1, his minutes aren't going to be that great. Also, the price is just way too high. Um, It's going to hurt Tatum, but Tatum is a little bit discounted. Like, he's usually been around 10K. So um, just, you know, a few hundred cheaper, but same thing with him. Like, just both of these teams are very solid defensive teams. Um, And that's going to hurt Schroeder, of course. Uh, Josh Richardson is out, but... You know, most of the guys, the other guys are going to be healthy. Like Marcus Smart is probable. He's someone I guess you can take a shot on because he is kind of cheap and he usually does step up in these kind of games. Now, Houston at Atlanta. So, um, Houston side, they're still dealing with a lot of injuries. Uh, Jay Sean Tate, someone that I need to talk about, 6,100. His price is falling and I don't think he's going to get a lot of ownership, but if he does kind of get chalky, this is someone that I'm going to fade. He injured his thumb and then he re-aggravated it um, a few games ago last week. Um, I think it was against the Pelicans. The ball just hit his thumb. And, um, you know, since that, like, you look at the shot attempts, he's just, like, he's kind of playing passive. He's more distributing. And when you get that, like, obviously, you're not going to be able to pay off this kind of price tag. So even though the matchup, I would say it's fine. Houston's been playing really well recently. But just seeing how, you know, it definitely is an injury concern. I don't want to play tape. That's going to open it up for Armani Brooks, 4,800. Someone that we played last season because the Rockets were shorthanded, but this guy's legitimately good for fantasy, at least. Like, he's getting the playmaking. He's rebounding well. He didn't even start last game. DJ Augustine started. Um, now, again, there's no Eric Gordon for that game. He's going to be back for this one. But, like, 4,800 for this guy, like, I think it's totally fine. So, I would say um, definitely you can consider him. Trey Young, again, point guards against Atlanta are a thing. Um, and Eric Gordon, 5'3", alone um, in his own right. Garrison Matthews, these guys more shot dependent, but, you know, they definitely do need guys to make shots. So they're definitely capable of that. Now Atlanta, so they have uh, Cam Reddish back now, um, still without a lot of the other wings. TLC, he played big minutes last time. He, I believe, missed all of his shots. So he's still able to get big minutes. Cam Reddish returned, but obviously with a wrist injury and illness, he just wasn't himself. And so he didn't get the minutes and he didn't shoot well. But um, I would say he's probably going to be limited a little bit again here. And you're probably going to see TLC at least play you know, close to 30 minutes. So I do like TLC. I think Reddish is fine. Like it wouldn't surprise me if either one of these guys had like a 20 plus DK point game because it is the Rockets. If you're looking at the main guys, I would say that uh, Capella seems to be a little bit cheap. 7,800. Uh, definitely um, one of the premier rebounds in the league. So he could definitely pay off, uh, pay that off. And his minutes have been a lot better. And in this matchup where they should uh, need him out there against Christian Wood uh, and uh, Sengen. So I think he's fine. 
uh, Philly at Memphis. So the Philly side, Joel Embiid, 11K. Um, he said that you know, he knows that he didn't play well last time against the uh, the Warriors on uh, Saturday. So you know, you can definitely see kind of you know the blow up spots here uh, because Memphis they are without Stephen Adams, doubtful. Jaron Jackson could also miss, so they could be very shorthand using Xavier Tillman, Killian Tilly, guys like that to guard him. So that's gonna be really easy for him. Uh, front of the Memphis side, so depending on who's going to be in for this game, like Dylan Brooks looks like looks to be a very good value at 6,200, but he's probably going to get some Matisse Thybulle defense, and Thybulle is actually one of the few guys that I do um, actually have to factor in about individual matchups. Kyle Anderson, 5'3", his minutes are definitely fine now, especially if JJJ is out, uh, but you know, they could definitely start JJJ at center even. Um, I don't think they will because it's probably going to be a lock that he just picks up two fouls against them beat, but I'm um, going to have to wait about uh, the Memphis lineup for this one. Now, next game, so that's going to be Charlotte at Dallas. This is pretty appealing, obviously. Now, the Charlotte side, though, I don't think it's as appealing as before. Um, just the prices are definitely a lot where they should be. Also, Terry Rozier is going to be back here. PJ Washington is still doubtful. So because Rozier is going to be in, you're not going to get the same assist upside in Gordon Hayward. Um, now, still rebounds, like... They will need Miles Bridges to play some center. The rebounds are going to be there for pretty much everyone. Um, JT Thor, 3,600. He's like, he's going to get some ownership, and Dallas doesn't rebound that well. But here's the thing. Terry Ozier, if he's, well, he is in, that's going to slide everyone down, and they're definitely fine with playing Miles Bridges. Like, everyone's basically playing out of position right now. So at these prices, like, I don't think JT Thor, JT Thor is a must unless, you know, he somehow starts. But that's kind of just Charlotte. Um, Dallas... So Doncic out again, Jalen Brunson going to be probably chalk once again, but it's like, how do you avoid that? Because Charlotte, fantastic matchup. Um, back-to-back for Dallas, uh, Porzingis. So maybe he gets rested in this one. Don't know. Um, if he plays, definitely, you know, you're going to have to watch if he's going to be limited at all. But if he's a full goal, yes. AK, I know he didn't play well on um, Sunday, but it's Charlotte. Like, you just play these guys, and especially without Luka. Um... You know, if uh, Porzingis does sit out, then yeah, you're going to be looking at guys like DFS and Maxi Kleber for value. So going to be uh, a wait and see about what Dallas does if Porzingis rests or not. Washington at Denver. So this is the problem about Embiid because there is Jokic um, right here. For the Washington side, though, again, this team just not that appealing, even though they, uh, Kuzma is out like Denver, not really the most appealing team you want to target. And Washington, even with some of these guys being out, like they're just slow. They are... You know, pretty good defensive team, just a total opposite of what they were last year with Westbrook on the team. Danny Avia, he's starting 3,500. Like, you can take a look there, but just not really guys that I would say you have to have anywhere. Now, say Harold, Gafford, um, you know, they have upside, but this is a very tough matchup for both of them. So, Denver, Jokic, 12K. I know it's expensive, but Washington has been getting beat up, especially um, inside. So, I love him either way, if Will Barton plays or not. If he doesn't, um, Davin, D- Devon, Reed, he started last game. Um, but they basically just play Bones Highland or Marcus Howard or a Facundo Campazzo to run with the four other starters. So you're really not getting any good value out of Reed. So rather it's those other guys um, here that are going to probably pick it up. So I like uh, Jokic, obviously, 12K. Probably going to be chalky, but, you know, he's just, he's the MVP for a reason. Now, Phoenix at uh, LA, so this is pretty intriguing, late night hammer, because you have DeAndre Ayton questionable, Booker still out, so Chris Paul back in LA, um, you know, he's going to be definitely comfortable here, I think you're going to definitely see him have a solid game here, it's just, can he do enough at this price tag um, with all the other plays that we do have on this big slate? Other guys that um, I would say stand out, it's going to be JaVale McGee, 4K, if Ayton is out, this guy, you're going to just play him. Now, I would really like it if Aiden is not, or the status of Aiden is not um, known until later on after lock because you're probably going to get McGee low owned. And I'm not expecting McGee to put up 21 and 15, um, but, you know, he's just a very, uh, very good fantasy producer. So at 4,000, their backup right now is Jalen Smith. So they don't really trust him that much. It's not like when they had Frank Kaminsky. So McGee's minutes are a little bit safer, and he's pretty active when he's out there. Uh, very athletic, much more athletic than uh, Zubats. So the Clippers side, so without or Paul George is doubtful, but Tuma as well. So most likely you're going to get a lot of value. So the Sunday slate or the Saturday slate um, showdown, um, I won that with Reggie Jackson at captain. And 
He is for 5,900. Luke Kennard, 49. All these guys are so cheap. You're going to be playing multiple Clippers in pretty much every lineup. That's how it should be unless one of these other teams, uh, these other games, there's something crazy that happens. Because even though it is a tough matchup against the Suns, you're taking out now Paul George too. And there's just so much usage that opens up. Reggie Jackson is the main guy. Marcus Morris is going to get a lot more shots. Now, his minutes were a little bit concerning last time um, because he it was not a back-to-back and he only played 24, but he was playing poorly, so maybe that was why. Um, but he's definitely going to be in play. Probably actually going to be kind of low because of that performance, but I would like Terrence Mann probably um, you know, kind of close to Reggie Jackson. He's playing big minutes. Same with Luke Kennard, but both of these guys are excellent. Like, man, he's not going to shoot as much. But he's going to rebound, and he's a very good defender. He can facilitate a little bit as well. Kennard, he just gets his fantasy points differently. He's going to shoot more, so you're going to get real po- more points from him. But fantasy output, like, they're kind of similar. So I do like them both. I prefer man because he is $500 cheaper. Also, just uh, the position flexibility. Now, Zubats, he's fine as well at 4-7. Uh, and then someone I do have to talk about is Brandon Boston Jr. at 3K. So the minimum, um, he is shot dependent. He didn't shoot well last game, and that's what you're going to get out of him. So... If he's able to shoot well, uh, tough matchup though, so I wouldn't really recommend playing a lot of him. But the min price, it just opens up everything for you. So if you do need something really cheap here, definitely look at Boston. So for my core, I'm going to start off just with the Clippers here. So it's going to be Reggie Jackson and then Terrence Mann. Um, and it's going to be uh, JaVale McGee, obviously, if he is going to be starting for uh, DeAndre Ayton, and then it's going to be Jalen Brunson. Not going to put Porzingis in because we don't know if he's going to play or not for sure. Um, and then it's going to be Chris Boucher to round out the core five. So that is going to be the uh, five guys for this video. Going to be writing uh, my article for DFS Army, free article again for the low owned plays. Not sure who I'm going to write about quite yet. Um, but again, one, if you guys are checking that out, thank you. But uh, those are going to definitely change throughout the day. Um, not the article because I write them before the night before, but um, because the ownerships and who gets ruled out, those guys definitely could either not play possibly or they also just become high owned. So do keep an eye out on that. Please do not just read it the night before and you know lock those guys in. So um, yeah, just something to keep in mind. So thank you guys for the support on these videos. Also for checking out the article on DFS Army. So I'll post that when I finish that um, down below uh, this video. So thank you guys in advance and good luck on the slate and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.